Hello friends, Patrick here. How are you doing today? A quick video today. I've downloaded um, COVID-19, The Great Reset. It's a free download from the internet. Maybe I can include the link. Um, it's known as being written by Klaus, Klaus Schwab, but it's actually really written by Thierry Malaret. If you look at his um, resume, educated at the, the Sorbonne in France and Oxford, master's degree, PhD. This guy, you know, the book is extremely well written and it's very insightful. I know that online they had this quote attributed to it, you know, the useless eaters quote. I haven't seen that in the book yet and I don't think it's part of this book. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. I think that's a misquote. But the book itself... I've just started it. I'm on page, what am I on? Page 17. It's extremely insightful. You can tell that it's extremely well written. And so I'm going to try and get through that and see what that's all about. But the general feeling I've gotten so far, then the limited that I've gotten through this and some of the other writings from the World Economic Forum, the uh, Agenda 2030, for example, is that this global governance that has been put in place has already been put in place over many, many years of effort. And you can see the, 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 um, the um, desires of, you know, these, these uh, global leaders and, and the desires that they have to you know, bring in this equalization and um, noble goals of reducing poverty and, and reducing disease and things like that. And, and, and they're, they're trying to make everybody on a, on a level playing field, which is in the, the Agenda 2030, of course. Um, but this is efforts that have been in place for many, many years. And I think uh, the last... The time I saw that uh, report, they said the only two countries that are not part of this, you know, global efforts, uh, uh, North Korea and Eritrea, a small country in Africa, I believe. And so this, the, the global efforts have, have, have um, already been implemented, if you want to talk about that. And I'd like to spend more time studying to segue into to, to studying um, the book of Revelation because the uh, capabilities that are existing today are starting to parallel the book. And in particular, I'd like to focus on Revelation 13. Um, I know that uh, Sam Harris, in his um, essay that I mentioned the other day, he was saying, well, if if the Bible had said that, you know, there was going to come a day when the Internet was going to be formed and it was going to have this and going to have that, then maybe he would believe. So he basically was saying, how come there isn't something much more specific in Scripture to allow him to believe, so to speak? A lot of what Sam Harris method of arguing is, if I was God, I'd do it this way. And so, you know, but the fact of the matter is, if you look at Revelation 13, it is very, very specific. You have sort of like three characters, the, the, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And sometimes they get mixed up within the context of that book. But if you look at the, the beast from Revelation 13, the characteristics of the beast, two things one that are very, very specific. One is the number of the beast, which is listed as 666. Um, and the second is the ability to bring fire down from heaven, even in front of people, that this capability that this beast is going to have. And so imagine a person standing in front of another person, and one of those people has the ability to bring fire down and destroy the other person. This is the description given in Revelation 13 that the beast is going to have, and the beast supports, 
you know, the, uh, the dragon or the first beast. And so we have that capability coming with the uh, satellite capabilities. They're sending up so many satellites, sending up so many satellites. You know that some of those satellites are going to have some form of military power. They're going to have the power to zap targets on the Earth. That's clear. And the other characteristic, the number 666, we can see that has been implemented on UPC codes for, for many, many years uh, or, or in computers in general. You could say that it's sort of a metaphor for the computer capability. And it says that the beast is even going to be able to uh, create the, the, uh, the, uh, the beast that can speak. So it's going to be like you can see that it, it, it could be a metaphor for the computer capability reaching the ability to speak as a human, to have this power to bring down fire. And, of course, we know that it asks that uh, it also, uh, the characteristic is that people cannot buy or sell unless they have this number of the beast. And so those that persevere, those that, uh, put their trust in Jesus Christ that escape from the power of the beast are described as having their name written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. This is a hope that I have. Because I believe in Christ, because I have put my trust for salvation in Christ, according to Revelation, it tells me that my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world, and that I have a future hope in heaven with God. Pretty remarkable stuff to read. And so I'd like to finish reading through the Great Reset. It's, it's uh, very insightful about the accelerating changes that are happening in the world today. And I would like to superimpose the Book of Revelation upon some of the writings of this gentleman by the name of, um, what's his name? Thierry Malloret is his name. Thierry Malloret from, from France, who's obviously extremely talented writer, extremely well-educated. He's got master's degrees in economics, history, has a PhD in economics, his career spans investment banking, think tanks, academia, and government. He worked for three years in the prime minister's office in Paris. He's written business and academic books. He's published four novels. This guy is somebody, you know, what if he if he's gonna put something down on paper, I think it's very much worth reading to see what his thoughts are. And so this, this, this book, The Great Reset, has been maligned in the social media circles saying that it's talking about all this depopulation. I'd rather find out firsthand what his book is about. And so I'm working my way through it. Like I said, I'm only on page 17, but it looks like a fairly easy read. It's only 110 pages, and so I'm already over, you know, almost... 20% over 10% of the way through and so I'm going to try and dig into that over the coming days and and hopefully finish that in in a week or two and um, see what that's all about and so I'll try and find a link for a free copy of that in case you might be interested in in checking what that's all about because there's been a strong as I mentioned a strong social media backlash against that book saying oh this is evil this is this is um you know, a, a depopulation agenda and all that kind of stuff. But I'd rather I'd rather read it read it firsthand. And so, getting back to the idea that these things are happening so rapidly, and that the the world political control has already been implemented and executed across almost every nation, where leaders are selected not elected they're selected and they're installed in the different countries of the world to further their agenda 2030 goals 
I kind of missed the the um, educating the importance of educating the next generation. I missed that to a large degree, and so my children were educated in a what you you could call the the liberal public education system. So there is no connection between my generation and the generation of my children. They essentially don't want to have anything to do with anything that I might consider valuable for study. They um, have their own agenda and they have been raised by the state. And so there is a total disconnect. In fact, there is even a disconnect simply based on my demographic. Because I happen to be an older white male, there is absolutely zero value put in any opinion that I may or may not have. There is zero value in any commentary that I might be able to, to provide on any topic. And so this disconnect has been perpetrated by the global education system, if you want to call it that, and has been done purposely to disconnect the next generation from any relationship towards historical conservative thought, conservative thought that puts value in um, theism, it puts value in worshiping the God of the Bible, for example. So the only hope now would be for the third generation. So the, the not not my children, but should my children have children, there may be hope for that generation to uh, escape them from the current educational system because the only hope for education today is would be homeschooling or private schooling or private tutoring. My mistake was thinking that the public school system or a, a quote-unquote liberal education would be valuable for my children when in fact it destroyed any connection to historical thought, any connection towards um, conservative values, any connection towards um, family values or, or those kind of things. That, that was all destroyed by the liberal education that my children participated in. And so there is a complete disconnect, right? They don't want to have anything to do with um, myself, even though I still care about them and love them and, and what have you. And um, they've decided to, you know, separate, cut themselves off from the generation that I'm a part of, which is sad, of course, unfortunate and what have you, but there's nothing that I can do about that. I was not able to see what was happening until you look back on it many years later. And this um, great reset book uh, that Schwab put his name on, written by this, this gentleman from France, gives some insights on the development of, of the uh, rapid changes that have occurred in recent history. And so for that, uh, I'm thankful because it is uh, very insightful. So that's uh, the only things I wanted to talk about today. Um, not too much else news going on, um, but um, I am realizing that I'm slowing down. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to mention is that I've decided uh, not to run. Had there been no other candidates that I would say earned my vote, then I would have uh, ran as a candidate in the upcoming provincial election. And for those that uh, uh, supported me and um, endorsed my candidacy to get me on the ballot, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but I've decided not to go ahead and submit uh, as a independent candidate. But as I said, there was somebody that earned my vote. It was the only candidate that stood up against um, uh, Bill 67 in the provincial government of Ontario. Now Quebec has their own issues with, with uh, I think it's Bill 96 that they're going to have to deal with that's coming up. But anyway, um, and, um, and so that person and the party that they represent, they earned my vote. And so if there had been nobody that was willing to stand up against that bill, I would say, yeah, I need to, I need to put my hat in the ring. I need to 
run and try and... Uh, but again, these political machinations are at a much higher level and they are controlled by forces that are invisible to me. But I wish them luck. I will support them. I will definitely vote. And um, I will um, encourage other people to vote for whatever party they believe in. If there is a candidate in your writing that has earned your vote, I would encourage you, get out there and try and make a difference. Get out there and try and at least vote at the provincial level. June 2nd is coming up very quickly. And um, hopefully that that person that, that earned my vote will win some seats. I hope they do. I hope that maybe some independent candidates win seats. I hope that any of uh, the other uh, independent parties that are trying their best, if they have uh, candidates with integrity, I don't know of any offhand, but if they do have candidates with integrity, I hope that they uh, gain votes or gain power or, or gain influence because there is, in the book of Revelation, there is a lot of indication towards smaller victories along the way towards the the new kingdom, the new Jerusalem that, that comes down in the thousand years of, of peace. And that, although it doesn't end well for most of the believers, there are these small victories that, that occur along the way where, um, even though the the beast overcomes them, and you know it does, like I said, it's not a pretty picture. The 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 victories are are in defying the the um, this this um, mark, right? The people that don't get that mark, they they the, they they cling to the testimony of Christ. These are the are the genuine winners in the panorama of history that that will last for all eternity, and. Uh, again, Sam Harris asking for specifics. I don't think anybody can read the book of Revelation without realizing how many specifics there are in there and how powerful a testimony it is towards theism. And of course, in particular, towards putting one's hope in, in Christ. So for that, um, that was all I wanted to cover today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Oh, is that Kiki? Hello, Schnick. I'm just uh, finishing up the video. We'll talk to you later. You have yourself a blessed day. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Bye-bye now. Take care. God bless you.